Welcome back to Let's Play Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. So, there is one car that we're missing. And we'll actually play as the original two when we get it. So, where could it be? Uh, we're not going to get a cut for one. So, I think this game's kind of weird. I did a little bit of research on how this game unlocks cars. I think what happens actually is... I think the last car we don't have is actually 100% prize, basically. See, normally, if you collect all the cars... Well, let's say this. So, it sounds like if you... Maybe this is just how it works in the 64 version. But, so you go through all the different car levels, you collect a secret car, it gives you that secret car. It sounds like if you complete the... the... Two mil cup, that will give you all the cars you don't have, except for one. Unless you already have all the cars collected. So I'm hoping that if I collect the one car I don't have already, then that will mean... And if we're collecting that car, then for having collected all the cars, I will then get the one car I don't have. If not, I can actually use a cheat to get it. But so otherwise my idea is if I don't get it for having collected this one car that I missed, which would normally be actually this car that I'm getting right now would normally be Jet Threat. This car that I'm picking up right now will hopefully give me the car that I'm missing. This is where Jet Threat normally be, and normally I have gone Toe Jam for having done this. So it's normal in those cases where, I don't know how you're supposed to find this in the slightest. So I'd already gone here and found there was something, but look at this. So Jet Threat is apparently... I don't know, like a Neanderthal or something. Frozen. Of course, if it's going to be driven by Dan, then who knows if that's really going to be the case or not. But, I mean, well, it's the original Jet Threat. It's the ancestor of Jet Threat 2.0, which is the one that Danny drove. So... Or alternatively, we can say if it unlocks this car, or unlocks the other car, we didn't get it. So I'm guessing is that what's supposed to happen is I have to twin. replay the Twin Mill Cup to unlock it or something, which I'm not going to do. So I've done everything in the game, though, having collected that now. So let's say that that car was... Oh no, I, see that, I don't know if I want to say that's the Ancestor Jet that or not. Or if it's something else. Yeah, so it seems like completing the Twin Milk Cup just unlocks you cars you don't already have. In which case... I'm just going to go to a cheat, because I'm pretty sure I would have to actually do the Twin Milk Cup again, which would be useless. So we will exit out of this. Enter the cheat that I'm expecting, that I'm hoping will work. There are apparently a few different sheets you can do too, so we'll look at those. Didn't seem to do much. Oh, whoops, I entered it wrong. Yep, okay. So that should have the... So now we ha should have that last car unlocked. We did everything in the game, so I don't feel guilty about doing that. This is the last one. So either, to either Toe Jam was... Is like a frozen Neanderthal that was there? Or... The original Jet Threat is the Neanderthal ancestor to Jet Threat 2.0. It feels kind of weird saying something is the ancestor to a car that Danny drives though, so maybe we'll just say Toe Jam is that secret Neanderthal. It's also a special car in that it's your 100% reward, kind of. That doesn't seem especially special, but I can just drive it real quick. Also, in the rest of this episode, just doing as we wish wherever, probably. Playing as a couple cars we haven't played as yet. And that'll be the end of things, I think. Go back to Dawn Encounter. Might only do like one rate, one lap here or something. I got all the hidden tracks. I got all the, got all the hidden everything. I found all the hidden everything. Well, I won't, it won't be a lie to say I found everything on my own. There were there was a small number of cases of me being told where something was in comments. And then the only one that I actually had to look up, which I mean is really different than being told in comments, I guess. But the only one that I looked at by choice was finding that last one I found just now. The Twin Mills are here! And Hypermite. Interesting. And Beatrice, or whatever her name is. Three, two, one, go! Yeah! <laughs> Beautiful. Violent. That's what this game is. Oh! And clunky. 
that I'll just uh, have some fun with. I mean, this is what it's like with enhanced. Dude, with enhanced rotation. Uh, stop that. Darn it. I was doing pretty well then. I can't just like gently bump into Hypermite to destroy it. Maybe I should at some point actually try to get that one shortcut legitimately. That one in the waterfall. I can't really rotate with this thing though, it's kind of awkward. I love the echo effects in this game, it is a nice touch. I think I'll just go one lap with each car though. That's Toe Jam. The Twin Mills, still close to each other. Not within the second of each other, but still. Positions next to each other. Which is nice to see. The inseparable twins. It just sounds so perfect. Twin Mill, how? See, the best sorts of developments are the ones that we think to ourselves, how could we have not seen them coming? And that applies to me as well. How can I not see that? Twin Mill would have, would have a twin in some capacity. Let's actually try racing at this Twin Mill one, though, somewhere. Just for fun. A snake River Mine. And we'll also, if there's anybody else we haven't played as yet that seems we're playing as, we'll do that too. For instance, um, what was it called? Actually, I don't think we played a Soul Air, have we? There's Soul Air. No, we have played a Soul Air because that's Alex. The one that we played, or the one that we were talking about, Jet Threat. Yeah, we'll say that Toad Jam, I think, is the frozen time one. Hi, Jethro. Hey, Rigor Motor. So we have Danny, Hypermite, Metacog, Rigor Motor here. This DHR charge isn't in particular. And Toad Mill. Hi, Toad Mill. That was just a free turbo right there, basically. I got all my turbo back for doing that. So I suspect that Tumel is going to completely break this race. Blind sound? I don't even know what that means. No idea what that rotation means. Yeah, this car is insanely fast. I think I'd seen somebody mention in comments before of a video on this game's soundtrack that Twinmill is, in one sense, the fastest car. I just figured that meant that it had max stats in terms of speed. But I saw other cars had max speed stat too, so I didn't think much of it. But no, this car is insane with how fast it is. So I'm managing to stay afloat here. That is really ridiculous things happen. I still hate those wheels there. It's not the music though, I was missing some of the music in some of these earlier tracks. You yeah, some really interesting music. So the music is just kind of weird, and that's kind of the end of the story. There's still lots of music, up, but generally speaking, I still enjoy this game's soundtrack a lot. It gives this game a very unique feel to it. This is a bit of a quirky, weird game. It's weird among racers, and it has some odd visual direction, and it has uh, some odd ways of unlocking cer certain things. That really saved me time. And additionally has a very odd soundtrack. Very eclectic soundtrack too, not just when it sounds weird and whatnot, but it's also just some stuff you wouldn't really hear of generally. And then some weird things like the double twin wheels, the twin twin wheels. I never saw it coming. I'm tempted to finish this race though, just to see how far had I finished everyone else. I hadn't looked at how sturdy this car is, so I'm kind of wary of accidentally like turboing the walls and whatnot. Oh, somebody actually went through that shortcut down the bottom. Huh. I'd like to see that. It would be kind of cool to finish off this playthrough by looking at, at the shortcuts that I, I never actually managed to get properly, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. There are only the two, I think. That one that I never actually went in at all. That lower one on that jump there. I might try to get it on the, on the next lap. And then there was the 
fucking waterfall one that I never went through legitimately. You know, I did go through it backwards. Yeah, that's a good place for Hanrick. That's actually fine, a good use for Hanrick. Ah! Damn. Huh, I thought I was lapping people for a minute there. Rigor Motors, Rigor Motors actually have a head. Kind of a funny callback to that race between Rigor Motor and the other guys, though. Or Rigor Motor and Twin Mills, I guess. You, know, you have to break weight harder than I'm willing to break there. I just want to see. Oh, now I get 4x4. Game, you know what? Whatever. 4x4 is insanely rare. As far as I remember, it only lets you go on certain shortcuts. And there are only like two 4x4 shortcuts in the entire game. Yeah, though, I have a certain respect for this game and some of its quirkiness, though, and how it managed to actually, to a certain degree, make such a physics based racer work. I'm to the point where I'm willing to call it a physics based racer, which I'm not sure I'd call any other game. There probably are other games that are worthy of that title, and no 4x4 for some reason. There's no use for 4x4 here. But it gives you ways to actually. It makes it so that crashing isn't especially punishing. You know, there are lots of ways to crash and to crash others. Oh my god. Thank god. Um. Jet threat? And. What happened here? Okay, Medicock had a problem. What. Really, what happened here? Jet that had a problem. Hiker might. Do they, like, get in a wreck or something? And Hyper might, might just, like limp home at the end there something bad happens like that's barely finishing I don't know if you can take 10 minutes to finish a race isn't there like a time limit actually does it not show on the top left that you need to finish a certain time or something I don't remember I might be th thinking of another game anyways let's see if there are any other cards we want to play as the last minute I don't know if we, are, we play as way too fast so fast I don't really have much appearance in this game there is a few I might want to play as, like Dragster, real quick. Dragster just looks interesting. I don't know if I want to play as Jet Threat. Jet Threat. Interesting how I'm pronouncing that. I don't know if I want to play as Red Baron because it's just a strong card, so probably doesn't have especially interesting stats. Yes, yeah, so let's make a quick little exhibition with Dragster and maybe Jet Threat, just to see. Dragster. I guess would be a good, good track for it. I won't do the whole race or anything. It would be nice to at some point try the stunt, the show off event again at some point for stunts and whatnot, but I'm not too worried about that. We already saw what it is and we don't unlock anything good or anything like that. So it'll just be trying again now that we actually are better at it, but there's still no metric to play against or anything other than trying to get a high score, I guess. Which isn't really much. Ooh, Silhouette, the Professor Gearhead. I think someone else? I don't remember who. I kind of missed him. This, it's, it's a, it feels like a drag racer. It doesn't really turn. Like, at all. It goes really fast, though. This is super fast. Also, does not rotate. That's a really interesting axis of rotation there. Somebody hit me. Nice. be a lot better for me to... Ah! Super Professor. I I can't really get into here easily. This way. It's like there's one part this car is really good at. And another that's really, really bad at. Like, boosting doesn't even really do anything for, the, for this car. It does literally nothing. It's like you're always boosting on her straight away. That's insane. It's actually pretty incredible speed. It's just that once you get to a turn, you have run into big problems. If you can hold it, hand it like that though, you're pretty okay. And then get some boost that way. Huh. Really interesting car. Be interesting to try to actually do that on some other tracks. 
Oh, the other car was evil, evil, who we don't actually have assigned to anything. Whatever. Okay. And last one will. And evil, evil is starting cars, but doesn't have very special stats. Only other one I want to try out just because it's the recent car we unlocked is Jet Threat. Jet Threat! Another place we haven't raced in a long time. But that'll be our farewell. So that'll be it for this, uh, for this episode and playthrough of Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. This was fun. I expected this. I don't know why I already expected going to this game. I expected something briefer, for one. This went on for a little longer than I thought. But also, I as I started playing, I thought it was going to go on for longer than it did. At the same time, so it's a little weird. But this was fun. It's a fun, unique game that I'm really happy to have played. And it had some interesting, fun things happen. Also, this is one of my favorite songs on the soundtrack. This one I listen to the most, actually. Alex, Furt, Professor, Danny, and so what? Because you do stuff like this. I didn't make the jump, but even still, like if I had made that jump, I would be even better. This game lets you do some weird stuff that I just would have never seen any other game like this, I don't think. Hopefully. So I have. Unfortunately, this game's license soundtrack did end up in me getting a couple videos marked as copyrighted, but it didn't result in anything being muted, so it wasn't a problem. I don't care if I uh, can't put adverts on a video or anything like that. That's not a big deal to me. Okay, though. But just had some fun. So this car just doesn't turn very well, and that's kind of it. Also, it doesn't especially spin well in the air, but yeah. That's really all there is to it. Otherwise, it's a it's a fast car. I got stop speed. Although, of course, Danny doing whatever he can, it's causing problems. Oh, it's causing everybody problems. Yeah, it's combative racing, which I mean, it's not unique in that, but it's it's you're not usually using power ups to attack or you're, like shoot opponents or anything like that. It's you use your car and physics. And if you get messed up and disoriented and whatnot, then the game actually gives you tools to fix that. Because it's expected that's going to happen. And you actually rotate in all sorts of ways in the air and in many cases on the ground and whatnot too. It's really cool. There's never seen anything like that. It actually makes backwards driving re like a thing you can do. You don't want to stay that way, but it gives you the tools to actually do that and then try to get out of that situation, which is awesome. And the car is very a lot in their stats and the like. Unfortunately, I don't feel like the game's stats are actually very accurate in terms of representation of what's like to play as a car. But despite that, it is really fun getting to have unique experiences with different cars. That's one thing I felt was missing in World Race. The cars are too balanced. They are all too similar. So in this game, you will have cars that are more like specialized, and in one track they'll be great, like Dragster. On straightaways, that thing's insanely fast, but it can't handle turns in the slightest. And that's okay thing, okay, okay for cars to do. It also wasn't awesome trying to rotate at all there. Because you'd have fun experiences and you can sometimes try to do weird things using one car on a really unfitting track or something good like that, or think out which car you're using. Because it matters if you're using a car that has really good handling or something on a track with lots of turns or anything like that, for instance. I love seeing games like that. It also has some pretty interesting creative hidden shortcuts. Some of them are, sh are just cheap. Although most of the cheap things are actually just shortcuts that are not creative, or that are not shortcuts, but are actually just hiding places for cars, which is okay. It's just that, like I said, at some points, it turns into, like, doom, basically. Just checking every little wall. I wish there were more different, like, visual themes in terms of the uh, levels. Like, they had so many snow levels in a row, I don't know why. But it was still cool. It also had a nice little touch of rigor motor. Having a place named after Rigor Motor and having Rigor Motor found in Rigor Motor or Rigor Motors is cool. But I think that's got to be it. I believe I know what game's coming next, so I don't quite remember 100%. I'm pretty sure I know what's coming next, though. But is that the best place to stop? I guess it is. I'll check real quick. I think I know which, car's, which game's coming next. <laughs> and we're going to be sticking to some old games, is what's going to be happening. Um, Actually, there is something else before I have in mind before we get into. Some older games. I have something different that's going to happen after this. Briefly. And then we'll get into a, another older game. Things are going to be some pretty different and fun from there. But until then, that's going to be it for this episode. And this playthrough of Hot Wheels Turbo Racing. The most exciting, violent game of hide and seek ever. 
of which Twin Mill, the Twin Mills, basically, I guess, were the winner. The weird thing is, there's no gold Twin Mill like you see in the opening video. Weird. Anyways, see you guys. This incredible huge cast that we managed to large, by and large, fill. Not completely, but a lot of it, which is crazy and fun. Everyone's so unique. And just to make it most appropriate, since this is basically the poster car for this game, for so many reasons. And the champion of our hide and seek tournament. Twin mill. The Twin Mills. And the most fortunate Twin car mill. has always kept up that appearance. The fan favorite. Goodbye guys, see you next time in the next adventure we have, which will focus on a very notable individual who has been, up until now, somewhat neglected. A little bit. But they're not going to be neglected from now on. Or at least for a short while after now. Until then though, see you guys!